is the newest game in the BCS series. This is Arco, um, Multiman Publishing, and it's the smallest in terms of playing surface required of the BCS titles. One thing that's different about this title from all of the others is it has a larger sized hex grid, meaning the, the hexes are larger and the pieces are larger. So just to kind of give you a sense, these are the normal half inch size counters that you're gonna find with the other games in the series. Put alongside of the pieces here, you see what I'm talking about. They're uh, noticeably larger. So that's something that's kind of nice. It, the pieces are not hard to read on the other games, but they're certainly easier to read on this particular one. Well, this one has gone almost the distance. I was playing the campaign, and I just started turn 26, and I think we're in a place where we can call this one. Technically speaking, at this moment, it's a draw, but the writing is pretty much on the wall, and it was a very near-run thing, uh, but I think the Germans have um, definitely shot their bolt. So here's a kind of a rundown of what's taken place. The, the big turning point of the battle happened early on when 21st Panzer got stuck between Loonville and its entry here. Probably a safer, although more conservative, move would have been to move up the path, up to the main highway, and then into Loonville. I opted not to take that route because I wanted to get into Loonville quickly with the Panzer um, infantry troops and obviously with the tanks and try to um, really put some pressure on the Americans early on. And it almost worked. I mean, it, it really should have worked. But uh, they were stopped just short. They actually got into Loonville, held it briefly. It changed hands a couple times, but the Americans eventually got in there. And a lot of that you can credit to unfortunate die rolls for the 21st Panzer and some very lucky die rolls for uh, Combat Command B of the 6th Armored, which really is the hero of the story in addition to the U.S. 4th Armored, which is usually the hero of the story in the history books. Uh, but the, uh, the 6th Armored uh, CCB is a factor early on in the battle. They're going to come in one of the entry points down on this side of the board. They came in and just tore things up in Loonville, and then they stayed on the map. That was another important die roll. Chances are high that they'll pull out and then possibly come back in later in the game. In this game, they stayed on hand, and that was vital to holding Loonville against uh, some severe pressure from both 21st Panzer and the 15 Panzer Grenadiers who are set up in this forest, and they're putting constant pressure on this vital supply highway here. This is a vital supply route for the 4th Armored. And so a lot of the fighting has been over control of this highway. This is kind of the Hell's Highway of Aracor. Uh, remembering, by the way, that this battle is taking place during Operation Market Garden. Uh, obviously, this is over in France as opposed to Holland. But, uh, yeah, there's there's quite a fight for this highway. The Germans sit astride of here. They, the uh, 111th Panzer finally broke through uh, the 4th Armored when the 4th Armored basically needed to rest up. It was over fatigued. And uh, so they got to stride the highway here, but they've lost control of Aracor. This has changed hands. I forget how many times now the Americans are in it again. Uh, but the, uh, the Americans just keep coming back and their tank force with the CCA of fourth armored has uh, really been a factor in the battle. The Germans just can't keep up with the Panzer losses. And, uh, and that's one of the victory considerations that's going to um, eventually come into play. Right now, 111th Panzer Independent Brigade is entangled with 11th Panzer Division, and so this is a this is impacting in a negative way their ability to um, get full operations. And uh, as a consequence, basically 111th Panzer is in a really tough place. 11th Panzer is coming in to try to stabilize things, but. Uh, due to some, due to the weather roll and the way that the the trend of things, I think that they're uh, they're probably the best course of action at this point is to cover withdrawal by the 111th Panzer and the 113th Panzer, which was almost destroyed in the game. Uh, they have uh, they have bounced back, but they they're not really in a position to take any meaningful offensive actions. That's going to be any anything that would turn the course of the battle. 559 Grenadiers came within a whisker of being a huge factor in the game. If they had been able to cross the creek here and get into that um, that entry point and, and run off the uh, 
the supply train that was there, that about the same time that the, the 4th uh, Armored CCA had lost control of the road running south, and a vital fight for this crossroads down here with 15th uh, Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, a lot of things that, that, I mean, the Germans were so close. If they had taken that, that could have easily rewritten the story of this battle. But the bottom line is you need four victory points to win. Germans control one of the three VP locations. The Americans have the other two. This one here is pretty fluid. That's going to be uh, bouncing back and forth, changing hands. The other one, of course, is Looneville. Uh, and then the other factor is how many uh, hard, that's uh, units that have a yellow NATO symbol, are considered hard, how many hard casualties exist. And right now there's one German in the dead pile that's considered a hard unit. So the Americans are getting that VP, they're getting that VP, and they're getting that VP. So actually, yeah, Americans are in a winning position now, although I, this is somewhat tenuous up here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call this one. It's been a fun, uh, this has been a fun game to play through. There's just been so much back and forth action and so many areas where this could have gone differently. The fact that the Germans are in as good of a, of a position down here as they are is due to a very unfortunate die roll last turn. We had a rain turn, and uh, this particular unit here, the uh, the, French, the Free French uh, Combat Command, uh, was not able to activate, so they rested up and stayed in place. Had they been able to move when they were supposed to move, that would have completely unhinged uh, 15th and 21st Panzers' Uh, supply networks. As it was, they were able to kind of restore things somewhat, but their position is purely defensive now. And they're no longer really a factor in the battle, except uh, as a blocking force to block a, a flanking move. And even that is starting to become a problem, because 79th Infantry Division, though it looks pretty fatigued right now, they've just scored a major coup against the 15 Panzer Grenadiers, knocking them out of a prepared defense situation, which is going to make it easier for the recon groups to shoot apart uh, the isolated battalions of that division that are caught out in the open. Now we have a good weather turn. There's lots of artillery in play for the Americans, and basically all of these guys in the open here are... Uh, they're going to get shot to smithereens, and once they're done, it'll be just mop-up operations. With the uh, number of turns remaining... And the trend, again, the Americans have rolled really well on the replacements. The Germans have rolled poorly several turns without any armored replacements. Uh, this is, uh, I fear that this has devolved, devolved into a lost cause. So, lots of fun. Panzer Charlie, uh, Bazooka Charlie, excuse me, Bazooka Charlie, <laughs> call him Panzer Charlie. He, uh, he's one of the... Um, support assets that's factored into the game and he's got basically a one in six chance every turn of uh, whenever he's available you get a check mark on the turns when he's available and uh, every time he takes a shot at an armored unit or a hard unit he, there's a one in six chance he'll kill a step and he was able to kill a panzer in a very crucial situation turned out that was a really clutch roll so pin a distinguished service cross on that fellow there because you know even though it's just a small chance and it's you know kind of a chrome rule in the game he actually he actually uh, played a pivotal role in the uh, decisive action around Loonville early in the game after that he hasn't done a whole lot of anything other than scare the Germans but uh, definitely a system worth checking out and the more I explore this, this system, especially with this game, this game really is a sandbox. You really get to explore lots of uh, maneuver options, lots of tactics. You know, it's not like in the, the Battle of the Bulge game, which is last Bl the last Blitzkrieg, where, you know, you have to straight up and hit them uh, head on, hit the Americans head on early in the game. This one here, there's lots of subtlety, lots of room for risky maneuvers to try to uh, bounce off the uh, enemy HQs and their supply trains and disrupt the supply situation. It has an elegant way of factoring in what you'll encounter in OCS in terms of interfering with the other player's supply system, uh, but this is handled in a much uh, more abstract and streamlined way. 
the combat system involves a, quite a bit of die rolling, and there's so many different ways that you can apply your combat factors and, and do uh, different kinds of attacks. And this game allows you to really explore what kinds of attacks should I be doing to achieve the results I want to achieve. So if you're looking at this BCS series, this is a game I heartily recommend to check out the system. It's It's got great production value. Again, larger map, larger counters. Uh, in terms of the size of hexes, the size of pieces. Doesn't require a whole lot of tabletop footprint. You can put the whole tray inside the box. You get all the pieces in one tray. Love that. Um, and this is everything you need for the whole campaign. The, it does have several scenarios that play shorter. The full campaign will take you some time to play. You'll probably need more than one setting to do that. But um, overall, this has been a really enjoyable game, and I definitely recommend it.